today on a very special How To Do It All. We're gonna build a PC. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Hey, but first take a moment and subscribe to our channel for more how-to videos. We love making these videos for you guys, but we love it even more when you can subscribe. So this, mm, boy, this is a topic we wanted to do for a while. And it turns out we have a friend who does video editing and motion graphics, and she needed a new workstation PC. And we decided to take our build and turn it into a how-to video. However, it does turn out that um, when you make how-to build a PC video on the internet, they will destroy you. They will just drag you through the streets like a crazy, crazy thing, and it just hurts. Oliver, you ready? So, um, I decided to bring in my friend Oliver and have him do the PC build for us. Hi, how you doing? Good, how's it going, Oliver? I'm good. So, uh, tell everyone what they can expect. Uh, I'm just building a basic PC. It's very simple, straightforward stuff. Great, and if anyone on the internet has either rational or irrational problems with your build, they should blame you, right? What? Great, let's build that PC. The parts you'll need to make a computer are a case, a motherboard, a CPU, a CPU cooler, if one is not included with your CPU, or if you want a better one, a graphics card, if your CPU does not have integrated graphics, or if you are doing some kind of gaming. You'll also need some RAM, a hard drive for storage, and a power supply. Of course, there are other components that you can get, but this will get you going. Now, Corsair was very generous and sent over some really cool, over-the-top RGB components, so thank you to them. So before we start building, let's talk about what kind of tools we need. At the most basic level, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, preferably one with the magnetic tip. Now, if your component requires a special tool, manufacturers usually include it in the box with the component. Now, other tools you'll need is a USB flash drive with the Windows 10 installer on it. I've placed a link to Microsoft's Windows Media Creation tool in the description below. Now, there are a few other optional tools that you might want to consider. I recommend an anti-static wrist strap if you're working on carpet. Electrostatic discharge can damage sensitive components, so you want to make sure you aren't charged up before you start handling them. A good way to discharge yourself if you don't have an anti-static wrist strap is by occasionally touching the metal parts of your case. Another thing is Velcro straps, zip ties. These both can help with cable management. You can also buy your own thermal compound or thermal pads. Most CPU coolers do come with thermal compound pre-applied. And the last nice to have, but not must have tool is organization. There are a lot of screws coming from various components to keep track of. So getting a tray can be very helpful. Let's start by clearing our table and turning our attention to the motherboard. Since every motherboard is different, I'm going to be keeping it very general. But if you're looking for specific information, consult your motherboard's user manual. There you'll find the layout with everything labeled. The first thing we're going to do is install the CPU. Now the next bit is very specific to the STRX4 socket. Threadripper uses three screws to lock in the CPU. First, unscrew the load plate in order from three to one. Lift up and remove the protective plastic cover. Slide in the CPU, making sure that the triangle markings line up. And a slide that guy in and then you're going to make sure that it's seated all the way down and then you're going to come close it down onto the socket you'll hear a little click like that make sure that it's seated properly and now we're going to put the load plate on it right over top so everything should fit nice and easy and you should not be forcing anything down. Be careful as the pins in the socket can be easily damaged. Now for the thread ripper, to tighten this load plate down, we're gonna go from one, two, to three. Now the processor comes with a tool that will click uh, when you've applied enough tension. So let's start with one. It can be very scary, don't worry. The tool will let you know when you've gone enough. Come on. Oh, slipped out. There we go. And the tool won't let me turn anymore. So that's enough tension on the processor. I'm gonna do that again for two and three now. Click. And there you go. 
Let's install the memory or RAM. On this board, we have eight DIMM slots available. For now, we're only using four DIMMs of memory. Your motherboard manual will give you recommendations on where to place the DIMMs depending on how many DIMM slots you're actually using. So before you put the RAM in, make sure you unlock the DIMM slots. Okay. We're using four of them. So we've unlocked four of the DIMM slots. Line up the DIMMs with the notch and then gently push down onto the slot. You should hear a click when it's seated properly. And there you have it. Next up, we'll install our NVMe drives. In our builds, we actually have two that we're installing. First, remove the heatsink and then insert the NVMe drive into the M.2 slot. Screw it down. Then, on the back side of the heatsink, you'll find two thermal pads. Peel off the plastic and then reattach the heatsink to the motherboard. Let's put this in our case. First, remove both side panels from the case. Then, lay the case down. Place the motherboard so that the rear I.O. panel fits securely with the case. Then, secure the motherboard to the case by screwing in these screws through the board. Next, we'll install the power supply. The orientation of the power supply usually depends on your case. It's a good rule of thumb to point the power supply fan out toward a vent. Screw in the power supply to the back of the case to secure it. So depending on your motherboard and your components, your power needs may vary. So for that reason, I won't go into detail about power connections. But I will say that all the power connectors are designed to fit in only one way. So don't force any connectors if they aren't easily going in. Now we are ready to install the CPU cooler. Our cooler comes with thermal paste pre-applied, so we won't be adding any to our CPU. Don't forget to check your CPU's cooler's instructions on how to attach it to the CPU. Since our cooler is an all-in-one liquid cooler, we have to attach the radiator to the case. You will more than likely have to connect your CPU cooler fan, or in our case, a pump, to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Also, don't forget to connect your cooler to the power supply if it needs to. Again, check your user manual. Next, I'm gonna install any additional storage, like an SSD. Different cases will have different drive caddies for your storage, so check your case manual for more details. Don't forget to connect your storage to the appropriate power connector, and also connect your storage to your motherboard using a SATA connector. Depending on your case's front I.O., right here, you might have a few things to connect. This could include front panel audio, USB, and of course the power and reset button. Then connect the case fans to the appropriate fan headers, along with any RGB if necessary. And finally, we will install our graphics card. First, remove the rear PCIe slot covers. Then make sure the PCIe expansion slot is unlocked. On the card, make sure it is free of any plastic or covers. Insert the card in the topmost PCIe slot. You should hear a click. Then connect the power connectors for your graphics card. Once all the components are in the case, connect a monitor, keyboard, mouse, and the USB stick with Windows 10 installer on it. Lastly, plug in the power supply and turn on your machine. Some motherboards will beep, others might power on and off as they boot up for the first time. Press the appropriate key to enter the BIOS. On this specific motherboard, it's the delete key. The BIOS will look different depending on your manufacturer. In the BIOS, search for the boot menu. Select the flash drive and press enter. Your computer will boot from the flash drive and you should see the Windows 10 installer. Follow the instructions on the screen to install Windows. After Windows is done installing, take out the flash drive and your machine should boot into Windows. 
And there you have it, you've built a PC. If you want to see us test the Threadripper 3960X, click here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.